All right, now, ever wondered why you fall ill from mosquito bites and others in your family don't, even though they've been exposed to the same virus? Well, researchers from Duke NUS here say it's all down to how stressed out your cells are. Yes, and here to help us understand more about this is Professor Wee Eng Yong, a lead researcher of the study. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Uh, so tell us how you conducted your research. So we used the yellow fever vaccine uh, to kind of simulate an infection. The yellow fever vaccine is a live vaccine. It's just a very weakened form of the yellow fever virus, which is a cousin of dengue virus. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when you give that as a vaccine, the, the, when you give the vaccine, the, the, it actually causes an infection. And about half of the uh, people who receive the vaccine will get a very mild flu-like illness mm -hmm. about five days after they get vaccinated. So, but nobody really understands why mm. some people get it, some people don't, and that's why we looked at, you know, tried to answer why this is so. And so we looked at what happened, what was in their blood just before we gave them the vaccine and how this predicted the outcome of vaccination. Okay, so those with stress cells and altered metabolism were found to be more susceptible. Yes. What's the link? Help us understand this. Right, so the, the cell stress, you can think of it like, like this. It's the cells are divided into different, different compartments. And one of these compartments is called endoplasmic reticulum, long word, but you can just think of it as a factory. So very much like a factory is making products and it has a quality control check. So when something goes wrong, like a factory, it tries to slow down the production, goes back and try and correct whatever that's wrong. Right? And, and in the process of doing that, that's called stress for the cell. Mm -hmm. right? So it looks like the immune cell is probably activated by something, we don't know what that is, and it's churning out new proteins. And in the course of doing that, it's making errors because it's now speeding up to, in response to whatever stimuli that is. Uh, and, and in so doing, it's, it's, it's at baseline before anything happens, already undergoing stress. Right? And possibly the re altered metabolism is a response to that stress. Mm. So then when you add on top of that a virus, which when it infects, it needs energy, it needs to make new proteins. Now it's really jamming up the factory and it's trying to draw more energy from the cells and everything then goes uh, you know, a, a, a haywire. Uh, and then the cells, when it dis detects that it's way too much stress, it just shuts everything down. Uh, and that's called that's cell death. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, then that's the whole, it, it triggers a cascade of events that eventually lead to symptoms. And is this then determined by how physically fit you happen to be when this sort of takes place? I presume like the, the healthier you are as an individual, the more chances your cells have of withstanding this. Right. So we don't exactly know what is causing uh, cell stress at baseline. Uh, so all these people that took part in our trial, they were healthy at the point where we vaccinated them. So we screened them for all sorts of diseases and they were fine. And yet when you give them the vaccine, half of them will develop symptoms. We don't know what is causing that. It could be genetics. It could be you know, the composition of the bacteria in the gut, also called the microbiome. Uh, how that, it, how it, that affects the immune system is something we're beginning, just beginning to scratch the surface to understand. Um, it could be uh, the body weight. So we know that uh, obesity places stress on the immune cells. And so that could also you know, predispose some people to symptoms, whereas others uh, do not get symptoms. Uh, and possibly other things that we don't even know yet. And mm -hmm. so that's something that we are trying to uh, you know, try and un unravel next. So, so it's just to come back to the obesity point, mm -hmm. is that something that is, is quite clear then in, in your research that, it's, that, it, that it could play a part and that you know that you know, the stress that your body is under when you are carrying more weight than you perhaps should be adds to it? Yeah, so that wasn't in our paper, although we have data to suggest, and, and again, other people have done this, so collectively uh, there's, there's data to suggest that you know, being overweight can predispose you to more, symptom, more symptoms and more disease when you do get infected with mm. viruses like dengue. Uh, and, and we know from experiences uh, both in Singapore and, and many other places, uh, the children and adults who are obese tend to get worse dengue. Most right. of your dengue. So, but cells also age, they, they age as we age yes. as well. So does it mean that the older you are, the more susceptible you will be, and the younger you are, more susceptible you will be to, um, you know, uh, contracting all sorts of viruses if your body, um, you know, is introduced to it? Right. So this does not, exp our study doesn't explain whether you're susceptible to infection or not. It, it explains whether you're susceptible to a disease when infected, right? Now, certainly I think when you think about this in the uh, 
the range of children all the way to adults. I think this holds true. The older, uh, at the extreme end, uh, the other end, the older adults, uh, it gets a little bit more complicated because uh, there's also immune senescence. So our immune, the immune system is, is not as activated as, as, as uh, young adults. Right? So whilst this process may apply, but it may not trigger the same level of of a response as the same process would if this would happen to, in a younger adult. So that, that extreme ends tend to get a little bit more complicated. Mm. Although you're right, you're absolutely right, there's more stress to the cells. Yeah. And what's next for your study? What happens now? Mm. So the next thing is whether we can prevent this. Mm. Um, so we're asking this in two stages. The first one, uh, as I said, the, the, the stressed cells then trigger a, a, a series of response that results in an activated, even more activated immune uh, system. Uh, that is actually about three, four days, three, well, three to five days ahead of the symptoms. Mm. So if you know that it's happening ahead of time, then can we block this process and would that then completely get rid of symptoms even though you have the infection? Mm. So that's the next thing we're doing. Uh, uh, that the trial is, is already funded, so it's, it's starting. Mm. But we're hoping to do another trial where we try and, mod and downplay or tune, tone down the, the stress cells right that even before they get infected. So it's, think about it like this way, if you have an outbreak, you have an introduction of a virus like SARS or something, can we give a drug to the population where we um, place their immune cells at a lower stress so that in the event they get infected, they don't get sick. Mm. So that, that's where we're hoping to go. Okay, we well, wish you all the best with that and thank you for coming in and sharing it with us as well. Thank you. Professor Wee Eng Yong from Duke NUS Emerging Infectious Diseases Program.